Hey, Mark Rodriguez here. This is America's number one cure for insomnia, the Diving Cutter Wrestling Podcast. And with me are... Jack Knives from Jack Knives Reviews. Wendy, also known as Ninja Doofy or Doofy Chan. And I will be turning this over to the one, the only, the man of the hour, the man with the power, the man that has the awesome hat, Johnny Rodriguez. Oh, goodness. Okay, guys, so today we're going to be talking about um, our review of AEW um, Wrestle Dream, and of course, we'll compare the predictions here and there. Now, uh, Ninja Panda's not currently here, but we do hope that he'll, you know, drop in sometime during the show. But uh, first, lots of news here and there. Um, I guess to repeat real quick, uh, Jade is going with WWE, and it's completely official. She's done photos and interviews and whatnot, so so yeah, it's not a rumor anymore. It, it's for real. And um, let me see, there's rumors about a, a certain someone, someone, you can show off your hat there, Johnny, a certain someone, someone that may be going back to WWE. Because for me, it's kind of like, okay, so I left the company that makes me sick, but now I'm with the company that's like a bunch of kids that, that could barely manage a Wendy's, but now I'm going to go back to the company that's making me sick. So, you know, I, his, his, his brain was like on pipe bombed. But uh, we'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. I, I uh, don't know what to think about that. I think it's actually a good move, but not in a wrestling capacity. Like, I do think him working in a backstage capacity could actually really help with, like, like NXT. Oh, if they gave him NXT, holy crap. Would that put I think that would be interesting if he did. Mm. Or, like, have him... Uh, yeah, like in a smaller capacity, just just you know, like kind of like do a. Uh, I mean, if they put him on like a part timer schedule, I think it would well, be uh, way easier. CM Punk, uh, we're gonna have to job you out to like four you guys. Uh. <laughs> Besides, uh, also the other thing is like people do forget. I mean, he was the last time he was in the company was over a decade ago i mean a lot has changed in a decade so i mean yeah. uh, i mean <laughs> other than the miz the miz is probably the only, he's like he's like not you like, again i got all new bright ideas for your character here punk it's gonna be such good shit <laughs> oh i remember i really liked CM punk back then in wwe and all this stuff. Just Sorry, how do you cool. feel about i make up and parachute pants the kids will love it Part of me wishes like someone would would go back. I, I wish I could go back in time and go like, "Hey guys, so you know how you're like really against pushing punk, but you're really, 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 really for Alberto Del Rio? Yeah, that's not going to work out in the long run. <laughs> like that's so screwed. We think about it, and I like Alberto Del Rio too. But uh, you know, that's just so screwed. Well, we think about him a it. douche, but you know, he. He bo- yeah, I mean, like, yeah, now we know what we know. It's like, uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's like, back it up. Oh, yeah, also, in a couple of years, you're going to get a call from Goldberg. Is he, Don't answer that call. Is the equivalent <laughs> of, uh, I love the Cosby show. You know, like, it's kind of awkward now looking back, you know? There's a there's a great scene that reminded me of that in The, in the Boys, in, like, the newer season of The Boys, where they unfroze uh, – soldier boy and he's like this kind of like captain america allegory but he's a total dick and he literally goes he's like oh man you know who used to throw a great you know who used to put a good great drink together who threw a great party bill cosby now that was a real man you could trust and then (laughs) that's just like yeah probably uh yeah i probably don't say that out loud anymore (laughs) but uh uh there is some other news uh dragon lee rush's brother is now um apparently he's signing with uh, wwe and he is no longer in aew or cmll mm. or uh so uh but they do plan on pushing him to the main roster not to nxt developmental which is that's a pretty big deal pretty big deal in my opinion uh on top of that mercedes monet uh even though she hasn't gone into specifics about her injury i guess her leg she's not walking around with a boot anymore mm. so that's a big plus and then on top of that uh the five star grand prix just finished in stardom with it ending with the most cursed five star grand prix with 
five separate injuries, including um, the most devastating one, which I never even knew that was possible. But there was uh, the first injury was um, Sayakami Tani. Uh, she um, had a separation of her shoulder after diving off of a giant off of the scaffolding and missed landing because no one caught her. Uh, separated her shoulder. Utami Hayashishida, the Red Queen, she tore her rotator cuff. Starlight Kid, um, she tore her, um, I think she tore her leg, a part of her leg. Uh, I forgot who the fourth person was. There's a fourth person, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember who the fourth person was. And then the fifth person who was the most shocking was uh, Natsupoi, who tore, who suffered what the doctors refer to as a cervical, um, a cervical hernia, you said uh, hernia. hernia. Yeah. A cervical hernia, which I've never heard before. And the fact that she, that you got to remember all of these girls are like less than 26. So like, this is like, yeah, this is kind of a shock. Cause it's like this many people, this many injuries. Um, especially cause a lot of these women were like at the forefront of, Oh, they're going to win. The tournament and for it to happen in the middle of the tournament was like still kind of like a big shock um is it but, like oh, um did they go to the darby allen school of wrestling or <laughs> no is... that's the the weird thing is most of these injuries like happened not on screen with the exception of saya kamitani the rest of them kind of happened like either backstage or prior to or in between shows so it's like it's kind of just random it's like i i don't know maybe it's just cursed but ultimately the winner of the five star Grand Prix, and it came down to, um, it came down to Suzu Suzuki and, um, I just forgot. Uh, oh, geez, I just forgot who the main, <laughs> main other person was, um, because it was such a big thing. Oh, oh, um, it was Suzu Suzuki and Mika from Donna Del Mondo and Suzu Suzuki, mm -hmm. who is technically a free agent. She, and she's not part of a faction. She ended up winning. Um, closest thing I could basically imagine if a smaller Joshi women, woman kind of had the mentality of a John Moxley. Um, she's a hardcore style wrestler, but she can actually like really wrestle, but she ended up winning the five-star grand prix and is going to be guaranteed a main title shot at dream queendom, which is their, biggest show on december 29th so mm. yeah now just a quick question that you probably know more about wwe what if uh what is uh gigi dolan and uh i'm sorry Gigi dolan and uh cora jade's been up to i know the toxic attraction thing did they split up already didn't they like yeah uh cora jade turned heel well heel er mm -hmm. and kicked out Gigi dolan i guess out of the like she beat the crap out of her and then it seemed like they were pushing Cora Jade to do a solo run. And then that just went nowhere. And then she hasn't been on TV. Oh. And then Gigi Dolan just kind of like, I, I think I've seen her like one, maybe two matches max. So like, oh, wow. It's like, it's like, yeah. So like they split them up really for no reason. I think it was because they were associated with Mandy Rose and that whole controversy. And they just kind of were like, well, uh, this never happened. <laughs> But I know um, Cora, you know, she, she she got stuff done, so she might be out for a while till till they heal up, because, you know, you got to take mm -hmm. chops and stuff there. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, with Gigi, I'm not sure, because uh, I, I, I really haven't... Like I said, I, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen Gigi in a while, although I will say I am, like, legit excited, because I think either this upcoming week or the following week, um, but it's just kind of irritating, because I guess NXT, they're doing the whole... Well, we don't trust our talent to sell tickets, so let's bring in some talent we're not using in WWE and bring them to NXT. So, um, we're uh, it's going to have Roxy or Roxana Perez, as she's known, yeah, um, for the first time ever. She is actually going to fight Oscar in mm -hmm. NXT, which I'm like, that's and that's freaking... the newer like demonic Oscar, the other one. Yeah, but I mean, out, still, right? e but even still, I mean, like to me, it's like. I think of them as two of their, um, like, I think Roxy is like legitimately like one of those women that I could see like being the next, um, forefront for the next generation of women's wrestlers. I really do. She's like, I've been saying that since she was back in ring of honor, 
she is just this dynamo i mean her nickname is the prodigy for a reason she just gets the wrestling industry um but i want to see her yeah and then i guess eo sky and oscar were supposed to fight just one-on-one in fast lane but here comes charlotte and now it's a triple threat okay so, so <laughs> well, WWE still to... just, just hasn't changed nope no interest in going back okay so anyways, let's start with the actual show. I don't think there's anything else to really discuss. Not much. Anything else will probably come up as we're talking about the pay-per-view because, of course, there are things that happen, but we'll get there when we get there. So the first match was interesting. I was surprised it was going to be the first one. I was thinking this was going to be like, um, you know, there's always like a kind of a sort of main event for the Zero Hour. I thought we are going to save that for last, but no. The event actually started with the eight-person mixed tag team match with... Um, Keith Lee, Satoshi Kojima, Athena, and her minion, Billy Starks, going up against Shane Taylor Productions, which is Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty, Diamante, and Mercedes Martinez. And the most I remember is um, Athena and her antics. She's still bossing Billy Starks around. Uh, there was a part that she was like, because you know the rule that, you know, if a woman gets tagged in, when you got tagged out, get a guy in there. So, so she was there. <laughs> when Shane Taylor was there and Athena was not backing up. Athena was still getting all up in her face and the referee's like trying to pull her back and then like he got a tag and whatever. You know the rules, Athena. And Athena's like, fine, just, you know, tag whoever in, you know. I don't remember too much about the Amante Mercedes. It did, you know, it did their thing. But uh, in the end, Team Athena, Keith Lee and all them, they they won the match. And I liked it. It was a good opener. It's just, I had to put everything aside because, you know, the whole snacks and stuff. I had to wait until that was over because that was the match I really wanted to see for Zero Hour. So after that match was over, okay, now I'm going to start, like, you know, getting snacks and getting stuff and whatever. But uh, any uh, quick thoughts? Uh, just as a Ring of Honor faithful, uh, it was really cool to see Lee and Shane Taylor in the ring together again because... They used to be in, a long time ago. They used to be in a tag team. He's actually the one that discovered Keith Lee. So um, they used to be a, a badass tag team. And it was just really cool to see them in the ring again together. Uh, Shane Taylor is just a reliable worker. I mean, I never expect him to be like, every time he wrestles, I never expect him to be like, oh, this guy's going to be the top guy. You know, it's, I kind of see him in the same vein. I see a, a Dalton Castle or I see a Mark and Jay Briscoe. I'm like, these are just guys who are like, shit we need an opponent quick call shane taylor like that's that's shane taylor he's just that guy um who could just basically like squeeze a good match out of anyone and he's I, got a strong presence though he's a big dude as a dude you not want to piss off in some dark mm-hmm. alley or something you know yeah and he's just like yeah and like i said they're big they're, that's the one thing i love about both him and lee is they're both big and they move really fast for how big they are so it's like oh okay and they're like more flexible than you would expect them to be um it was cool to see that. It, w- it was kind of funny. Like, I love when they came out in the entrance and just seeing Athena. If you noticed, Athena was doing, like, kind of almost cheerleading for Keith Lee. I was like, oh, it's so cute. Um, but, you know, I you guys know I love Athena. So I, I'm just, like, super happy with her. Although it was kind of funny because I know she's going for, like, this whole I'm an evil I'm an evil woman thing, but she's become so popular that it's kind of like now she's starting to crack the facade of like, she's not quite a hero, not quite a villain. She's like an anti-hero kind of thing. And I dig that. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) So I'm like, I'm really digging what they're doing with that. Um, I, I I don't know. I mean, it was, it was just kind of a simple match. Didn't really have much to say about it. It was just kind of a fun way to start it. Now, this one had no points because it was announced after the fact, so we're not going to count any points. I mean, me and Wendy talked about it, but it was just us talking and our expectations, but, you know, points and stuff don't count. Uh, any thoughts, Wendy? I thought it was interesting, but uh, the highlight for me was definitely seeing Keith Lee again because it's been a while because I really like Keith Lee. Well, you know, you know, and I liked most of the others that were there too, but... Like I said, what we were talking about, the main thing I wanted to see was Athena and her antics and see how she was going to react during the match, you know? Because I wanted to see her boss around everybody, try to make everyone her minion, you know, even the guys. I mean, Athena did not disappoint, and that's bad because that's how that's that's overshadowing anything from the match for me. Aside, aside from what you mentioned about Keith Lee picking up what's his face and then just slamming him down like he weighed like like you know 
I don't know. Like, uh, like, let me see. Uh, Jack Perry body slamming a toddler because I can't see him picking up anyone else. But, you know, because he's like skin and bones. So, you know, like that. So it was just crazy, man. Pretty cool. It was interesting and it didn't have to worry about bad camera work. But it did in quicker than I expected it to. Mm. I would have to say. What do you? Th what did you think, Johnny? Um, I don't think really remember too much, too much about the match, but I did felt that the match was kind of short and kind of like what you said. I was expecting to see a little bit more of Athena because I was actually kind of like, I don't know, like it's a big deal that Athena's in this match, so I wanted to see more of her, and it wasn't enough in my opinion. Um, it was still a decent match. I think it was still a decent um, kickoff match to kind of start this thing rolling. I'm still surprised that it was the first. It seemed like it should have been since, uh, given the type of match that it was. I mean, most of the Ring of Honor, you know, most of those matches are like, you know, exhibition anyway. But it seems like it really should have been like right before the main show. I mean, a match like that. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like it was just it was placed in an odd. I just thought it was odd to be placed first as opposed to last. Yeah. So, anyways, the next match was ironically also the next um, one that was announced last minute. So, no points for this one. Just I'm saying this in advance. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli with John Moxley in the background. No, I think actually went to the commentary table uh, against uh, Josh mm -hmm. Barnett singles match. And I gotta say, uh, the most I remember is that Josh Barnett. Um, he put up a good fight. He really challenged the fuck out of Claudio. Um, people were joking because he does kind of look like Lesnar, sort of, but I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, my opinion, he looks like Lesnar if Lesnar can actually wrestle. Ooh, yeah, I know, I know. And I know that in the past, before he started with this whole suplex city shit, but my understanding is that Lesnar did, you know, wrestle quite well back then with more moves and more takedowns and more whatever. But nowadays, yeah, that's all he is. Suplex times 10. And then the F5, whenever he gets tired, whenever he's, oh, 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 trying to end it. Okay, F5. You know what I mean? So, um, Josh brought the fight to Cloud. We got lots of close calls. I was actually kind of rooting for Josh because, I mean, there weren't any tosses in the line or anything. So it would have been kind of cool to showcase him. But, of course, Claudio still won. And in the end, they had this little speech there about the respect and all that kind of stuff. And Josh uh, says the day ain't over yet. You know, I'm going to come at you full force next time. All, all that kind of junk. And I would be looking forward to a second match, but hopefully one where Josh wins just, you know, to kind of uh, break up the monotony that everyone everyone and their grandmother is expecting Claudio to win. And, of course, everyone loved John Moxley. John Moxley did a good job hyping up Josh and talking about how, how tough they would both train together and how much of whatever, you know, to make it sound more like, oh, shit, what's Claudio going to do now? So he did a good job. It was kind of funny. People were kind of saying, like, yo, he's, like, hyping up, like, the opponent more than Claudio. But, I mean, you know. Josh is the unknown, so you kind of need that extra rub, but, yeah, you know, good match. Good match and everything. You know, it's kind of messed up because I wasn't listening to anything Moxley was saying, so I didn't even notice that he was, try he was trying to... Um, yeah, but in your case, you're like, oh, Moxley's talking, tuning that shit out. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, mm -hmm. what's funny about Josh Barnett is, um, well, not funny, but it's cool about Josh Barnett is one UFC legend. But he's also, um, he has a sort of mini promotion that he pulls out every once in a while called Bloodsport, which is basically a little, um, it's more of like grounded in like actual, like real ground mat wrestling. And he invites anyone to wrestle. And literally it's a ring, it's a four by four, or like a regular ring without ropes, without buckles, without, it's just the ring. Like there's nothing oh, else. Like, like, to, like a virtual like, that one, huh? Yeah, and he's done open challenges to anyone. He does it every. He's done it every year. Uh, names that have been in it, obviously. Uh, the names that have, the most the most shot the the names that have been in it. Uh, Suzuki, um, Matt Riddle, hmm. Tomohiro uh, Ishii, Moxley, a uh, bunch of other people. Like the, he's he's very focused on like the purity of like actual wrestling and the reason moxley kept hyping him up is after moxley left wwe he wanted to get into new japan but he even said he wasn't strong enough the way the wwe style was to 
be able to keep up with them. So he actually contacted Josh Barnett and Josh Barnett had to re-show him how to wrestle. So Josh Barnett is actually the reason Moxley can wrestle now the way he does. Yeah. So he showed him how to do like the hard hitting strong style, which prepared him for the G1 and got him into becoming a well, in other words, no more of that weird pretended PG shit. Now we're going to wrestle for real. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you know, you also notice that uh, Moxley doesn't do that stupid dumbass rebound leg oh, like thing he, right. he used to do that in the ring he used to go bring he doesn't do yeah, that yeah i remember anymore. that stupid shit the, 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 was the, Dean only problem, Ambrose. the only problem he had with that for me was that it's a cool kind of surprise movie if you only did it once in a while but, he did but it, when you do it every the match. first time i saw it that was kind of a you know i mean it caught me off guard i was expecting yeah. you know but then yeah, but it does it every match it, yeah it loses its its thing right and I uh like being with the young bucks <laughs> you know, and every time I see them, oh, you're going to bounce themselves around and but, do the uh, same old moves they always do. Oh, but boy, uh, so but Barnett, Barnett is one of those guys who um, he's essentially like he's an old lion, basically. They just send him to uh, – he sometimes shows up in New Japan strong. Sometimes he shows up to help up the advanced talent of like kind of like the New Japan management going like, look, we got a bunch of trainees – they're clearly not getting what we're teaching them. Josh, can you help us out? And he'd be like, my pleasure. <laughs> That's how he is. He's just like, <laughs> and they're like, I get it. I'm sorry. And then they basically not in a way of like an aggr- aggressive way, like as a match of like, all right, you're a little big for your britches. Let me knock you down a couple pegs to get you to get understanding the fundamentals better. And then they end up doing so like, I can imagine the first time he gave, because you said it was literally after he left WWE, I can imagine the first hard chop he gave Moxley Box is like, oh, yeah, this shit's getting real. <laughs> like, this is how it's going to be, huh? <laughs> yeah, because that's that's one of the things that Barnett uh, has a mentality of. He always goes like, um, he even said his finisher is literally, like Barnett's finisher is an exploder suplex. Like, it's just a suplex, which sounds bad, but when you're someone as big as Barnett, just getting just, what, like released on your head, that's gonna hurt. I don't care who the fuck you are. <laughs> um, and is he just it, is it safe to say that he beat the living Ambrose out of Moxley. Yes, <laughs> he took the lunatic fringe out of his hair and <laughs> and then he shaved it <laughs> and it lunatic. never grew back. <laughs> Here's the thing I actually like that lunatic fringe gimmick, you know, he's like kind of crazy and all that other stuff. Now it just seems like he's trying to be a badass when he can't, but like, not really persuading me that he's a badass because he's Mark, trying too hard. Mark, Mark, and uh, Mark will vouch for me when we used to talk about WWE. Remember, I used to say, I used to joke so hard about the stupid nickname, the lunatic fringe. I'd always be like, I'm like, I remember Mark once I was like, why does he wrestle with a tank top? I'm like, because he's a lunatic. <laughs> I think Johnny used to think that they were calling him the lunatic fridge. And he's like, no. yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember, Johnny, you were like, you're like, why is he a fridge? I don't get it. <laughs> no, I think it's. See, that's fringe. how much of a lunatic he was because he thought he was a fridge. He thought he was a magnet, everybody. He's crazy. Anyway, um, but no, uh, like I said, I love Barnett, but um, I did hope for a little more. When I saw it was on the pre-show, I was like, and I watched the match. I thought, oh, it was a pretty solid match. I did personally think they should have switched that match with the Starks and Yuta match. They should have put that on instead of the Wheeler Starks match. Yeah. But that's me. Looking at paint dry would have been better, would have been a nice better replacement for the Ricky Starks versus really Utah match. But we, 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 we Utah, we, we, whatever. whatever. I don't know. Uh, Johnny, your thoughts on that match? If you remember anything, honestly, I don't really remember much. <laughs> to me, it's just like a Claudio Castagnoli match that he keeps winning all the time. So, Thanks. yeah. It's- mm-hmm. I'm it's sorry, good... I said that match with Jericho, I just can't. Every time he does the spin, oh my god, I hope he doesn't tap. Yeah, it's a decent match, but it's nothing I don't really remember, to be honest, the match. Mm. For me, okay. for this particular match, I kind of, um, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, like Jack said, it did seem pretty solid. But personally, I know it came out of nowhere, but I still kind of wish there would have been a little build up to that. But it was kind of 
probably not meant to be that way. I also so, wish they could. I wish they also could have explained to the AEW universe who Josh Barnett is. Yeah, that's where I was going with that. Or, that's yeah, pretty well, much well, how I felt. Oh, they haven't used that in a while. Back back to the these are called the, the AW Galaxy. Because hint hint nudge nudge. I wish they kept that for a while. They they did drop that pretty quick, but it was funny. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much it. I really wish you could have there would have been some kind of build up or an explanation to to all of that because it just seemed to just come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And for those of us who are like, we're not as well versed in all the different promotions or you know, all that other stuff, it would have been nice to have that. Yeah, and it's like what I said before, one of the times Jack brought it up, it's like Tony Khan has the advantage that he can just show all these different promotions and all the footage and stuff while, while WWE very, I mean, sometimes in very rare occasions, you do see like ancient training indie tapes, but it's very rare. Yeah. Like Khan can do it. Just fucking yeah. do it then. Take advantage, you know. Like, right. Oh, like, you know. I, I mean, have it, Hoggle saying like, yeah, you were a tough guy, but as he's doing the voiceover, you see matches of right. Barnett doing stuff. Yeah, I mean, plus the fact, like I said before, Barnett has his own promotion. I'm pretty sure it'd be easy for Khan to go, hey, can we use some of your footage to hype the match between you and Claudio? He's like, oh, yeah, sure. And he could just show a couple things that have happened in Bloodsport or just yeah. whatever, you know, uh, or some things from New Japan or some things from Ring of Honor or whatever, you know, but no, no that's too much effort. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's uh, cutting into his, uh, how should I say, uh, white powder appreciation time. But anyways, uh, the next match, this one actually does go for points. This was part of the thing we did, the predictions. It's uh, Nick mm-hmm. Wayne going up against Luchasaurus, but Nick Wayne's attractive mama in the background. And Probably um, doesn't see her. <laughs> yep. So uh, don't worry, Christian got them digits. So anyways, I mean, Christian maybe, maybe gained them digits. All you have to do is just show her one. So anyways, Luchasaurus, uh, as you imagined, when you see the side there between Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus, Nick, uh, Luchasaurus just thought out demolished her. Whoa, demolished him. Damn fucking Christian Cage. Demolished Nick Wayne and, and you know, and took the win there. And uh, the rest of you guys can uh, give your thoughts if you have any for such a can, match. Can I say something first this time? Yes, go for sure, it. Sure, go ahead. Nick Wayne is like, it's like 10 pounds soaking wet. There's no chance of him will win anyway. And I just want to say this. Just the idea. I just want to I just want to see or hear Christian go up. Want I wanted him to go up to like Nick Wayne's mom. It was like said, Hey baby, wanna see my kazoo? Mm-hmm. I just want I just want that. I just want that. And then she gets really mad at him. You know, I thought that would have been funny. I think it uh, I I knew Nick wasn't gonna win. I mean, I know I said I did, but yeah, that was I, the weirdest thing. Looking at the team, I, I was being contrarian, really, because I was just like, you know, hey, no one else is picking him. I'll pick him, whatever. But the, with him, I was literally thinking. Um, I think my biggest issue was I, I was just expecting some offense. I don't know. It's just me. I mean, like, I was expecting something, I guess. Uh, whereas the match or the camera work or Whoever the hell was booking this match focused more on Nick Wayne's mom than they did the actual match. I heard, Wait, I heard her, his later, mom was later that night the mom took a lot more offense than than, than her son did. But... Apparently. <laughs> oh, oh god, no. <laughs> hey, hey, we all gotta say, in this modern day and age, with all these like deadbeat dads and fathers that always like just walk out and never, you know, the, the pack of cigarettes and never come back. Christian Cage is a true guy that'll step up and be your stepdad. He stepped up when when the real dad did. You know, like, <laughs> I uh, I'll get back to Christian later, but I'm I'm really uh, I don't know. I I guess I just felt like kind of like it feels like now that Lucha doesn't have the TNT belt, he's gone backwards it just feels like i don't know it's like because he started off as the second tier to jack perry and then he was the right hand of christian and now and then he wins the tnt belt and i'm like oh cool and then he does he basically gives the 
belt to Christian, and then Christian is the champ, and then now he's backwards on the pre-show again. And I'm like, is Khan afraid of anyone? That, is Khan unable to book anyone that's over six foot? Like, I, I feel like that's... He fears for his life, Jack. He fears oh, yeah. for his life. You know? You're right. You're right. They might sneeze really hard, and he might shit his, uh, shit his pants. <laughs> they scared of anyone that's over six feet tall... Or anyone that that weighs more than like 150 pounds, gotcha. Did you see that man? He came out of nowhere, uh, Nick. That or Tony. That was the um, was the catering guy. He was bringing in a plate of cookies. He just came out of nowhere. You weren't there, man. Oh, I had that uh, Tony Khan doesn't like people that are very opinionated. That's the thing. Because mm-hmm. love him or hate him. He always had something to say, and he's not afraid to say it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I'm pretty sure that uh, Luchasaurus growled in a very opinionated tone, and that wasn't to uh, Khan's like uh, what Khan's liking. Anyway, uh, your thoughts, Johnny, on the match, or just okay for this match? I I, I felt bad for um, I felt bad for this guy. Um, Nick Wayne and the mom. Wayne, because he got beat up so bad. And, and like, of, of course, I mean, look at the size difference. Compared him to, to Lucha Swords, of course, there's going to be a size disadvantage. But still, you would have, I was still expecting a little bit more from Nick Wayne. But damn, he got beat so bad. And of course, it looks more like the Nick Wayne's mom match because they keep showing her, like, oh my God, you're going too far. And all that shit. Like, it's like a problem. Like, it's funny in a certain way. But uh, but I actually feel for her because imagine you're the mother and you're rooting for your son. Like, oh, yeah, he's going to fight this badass match versus Luchasaurus. And he's getting beat up like a piece of shit. I mean, that, that, has, to be, that has to be devastating. I know. I, I mean, Nick, Nick Wayne almost took his heart pounding at his mom to there that night. Like, jeez. Oh, God. Go on. <laughs> yeah. I know, she did see the cookie. I, I will say no, the part. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, go on, go on. That was say, so she did play the cousin. Yeah, but, um, Christian. Christian said uh, he she played it masterfully. What one thing that made me laugh, though, I will say, is the part where she was like too far. That part made me laugh, and it made reminded me of that internet meme of the "You need to leave." That's what <laughs> <laughs> heard it in my head. I just heard that, like, you need to leave. Like, that's what I you heard. Know, you need a whole scene. Show scene. It looks like a reality show, and they're in the drama, like, they're going too far. It's like that, that kind of shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this yeah, is I will say this. I will say this, at least compared to, like, oh, who was it? I forgot which match it was, like, like for one of the other pay-per-views. Or, you know, where you had the parent in the audience, but the parents, it's like they know it's just a show and they were treating it like one, as opposed to Nick Wayne's mom, you know, she's in on the joke, of course. It's like, my son is being hurt, and she's reacting like someone who's seen their child being hurt. I'm like, like, oh, that match with Willow against, um, I think, Athena, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Or I forgot what it was, and her parents were there. And, um, yeah, it was Willow. They were all like, oh! That's my baby there, man. I said, dude, you're supposed to be upset right now. Act upset. Or like, oh. That, that's my, my baby getting dropped on her head. You know? My favorite yeah. one, my favorite family reaction will always be, <laughs> it will always be Shane McMahon in the hell in the cell with his kids. And they cut to his kids. And then like, it shows his dad. It shows Shane and his face like scraped against the cell like that. And his kids are like, <laughs> like be sad. <laughs> They're just like, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. I mean, to be My fair, dad, nowadays, I'm surprised they didn't do something where, you know, someone's getting bashed or, or, or you know, like they're on the table and the person jumps off the shoulder of kids and the kid's like, you know. That would have oh, actually been oh, hilarious. God. I would have laughed so hard yeah. if that happened. Mm-hmm. But uh, one thing that did, um, yeah, I was just like kind of. Oh my God, Shane's doing the coast to coast, kids. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Even though grandma, um, grandma keeps telling him not to. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
it was eh, that's but I think it'd be good to have a Nick Wayne versus maybe Darby Allen. Because even though Darby added double his age because he's yeah, he's older than him. He just um, turned eighteen. Dang. Nick Wayne? just turned eighteen. That's the whole Wait, thing. They, they've had a match. They, they have they've had a match. We need Nick and Ringo Bonner. They could tell her when he turned 18 like about 10 times. <laughs> yeah, but Billy Stars. Mm -hmm. Billy Stars. I'm, I'm I'm out of it, guys. Any other uh, comment, guys, just before we move on to the next one? And this one, everyone got a point except for Jack because I guess Jack just had to be Mr. Contrarian and I guess he took it too far. I know he's got to lose, but I just got to go against the grain, you know, rage against the machine, you know, like, <laughs> Okay, so the next match we had here is about one of Jack's personal favorite tag teams of all time. The Acclaimed has arrived, you know, with uh, Daddy Ass there. Uh, going up against, uh, let me see, where are they? Dude, I forget. Yeah, um, TMDK, the mighty Bono oh. Neal with Shane Haste, Mikey Nicholas, and Bad Dude Tito. And I, I'm sorry, when I saw Bad Dude Tito, he reminded me of Adam Bomb, but without the goggles. Like, at least physique he got, stuff. He got a lot skinny. He got a lot more lean than I remember the last seeing him, because he's been, apparently he's been working out a lot. Before, he was, like, big. He was, like, heavy. I think he's just been working out a lot. Mm. There you go. <laughs> got the scissors. Thank you. <laughs> uh... I, I 100% honest with you, I would literally, I deliberately avoided this match. I literally was like on my phone the whole time. I really went out of my way to go, hey, I'm going to order some food. I'm going to go shop on Amazon. I'm going to literally do anything but watch this match. Although I will say the best part about this whole thing was, because I love Shane Haste. He's one of my favorite like comedic uh, wrestlers. Was uh, I don't know if anyone else saw it in the pre-show when he uh, <laughs> they literally go oh he because he's Australian he's like oh they think they're so cool because they can rap huh well uh, two could rap he's like he's like two could rap at that game monkey give me a beat he's like absolutely not and he walks away <laughs> I, was like, I was like genius. Mm -hmm. But uh, honestly, I, I like I said, I didn't watch this match, so I don't really care. Hmm. Huh. I'm trying to think. What do I remember about this match? Because you can't spell I... acclaimed without lame. Uh... Huh? No, I'm trying to remember. I'm legit trying to remember something about this match, but I'm having a hard time remembering anything about this match. I think I thought that the acclaimed would win because it's the acclaimed and they're just so disturbingly over and I still is surprised at how over they are given the gimmick. But but I will say I did like the rap. I mean, you not like their raps, but they really those diss raps are just funny. But I don't know, Mark, can you refresh my memory a little bit? He would have to help me. Like, I don't remember much about the match. I guess it was okay for what it was. Like I said, I remember mostly that um, the dude reminded me of Adam Bomb, but if you dropped the Adam Bomb gimmick, it was like a, like a regular strongman. All right. Overall hair and physique, but the rest is, you know, usual shenanigans. Blah, blah, blah. Daddy yes, it's it for everyone. I mean, yeah. Again, um, Bowens did, he did whatever fuck he does, he doesn't have a power slam or something, and then, uh, the other guy wrapped it up with the, with the mic drop, and there you go, win, you know, like, they were never, and then he, uh, like, true danger of losing the match, you know what I mean? No, it was, they weren't, so, it is what it, it, it was what it was, that's all I can say. Johnny? Oh, I don't really remember... Okay, any this match, um, in all seriousness, I think, I don't even know if I was even, like, super invested watching the whole match to begin with, but, um, I just know that the Acclaim won the match, yo. 
Yeah, so everyone got a point, and with that, we can start the show proper. And uh, the first match we had was MJF on his own because Adam Cole still injured. Going up against the Righteous, man, we got uh, Vincent there, and we got Dutch. That was knows how to show girls a good time. And I got to say, it's a very interesting match. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. And the crowd was behind MJF the whole time. It was pretty cool. I was surprised there was no outside interference. Of course, the Russians got to show up all their skills and their stuff. And But yeah, the whole time I was expecting either um, Jay White to come out to attack because, um, again, the episode of Dynamite ended with uh, Jay White being jumped by mysterious dudes and one guy was wearing like the same double mask MJF did. So some people were kind of making bets on either Jay White himself is going to come out to attack MJF or this mysterious other devil dude would show up. And you know how they always do that the moment MJF distracted. Oh, who is that? He'll get a roll-up pin and all that kind of crap. But no, it was a straight-up fight, straight-up match. The funny part is MJF did his predictions where he did say he was going to body slam Dutch and grab Vincent and shove his braids up his ass. And uh, he literally did it. And, of course, the crowd went wild. He did the kangaroo kick. The crowd went wild again. And MJF actually won and, and you know, left without any random outdoor shenanigans or whatever. So, for decent match. And the crowd ate it up. I mean, Jack may think differently based on his facial expressions, but the crowd ate it up. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Jack? I'm kind of curious. Well, they jobbed. It's literally it. You wasted a good tag team for a joke. That's pretty much it. But it seems like everyone who fights MJF becomes a joke. So I don't really have much else to say. Like, it, it makes no sense also why they would keep the belts on him. Because like I said, Cole isn't like kayfabe injured. He's actually like, they're not doing it like Roddy Strong with his neck injury, not really being real. Like Cole is actually like going to have surgery like this upcoming month. So. I don't know why they just didn't just drop the belts. Even if they use like some bullshit heel, heel tactics, you know, just like give the belts to a team, a tag team, you know, and also it destroys the threat of the righteous. The whole point of the righteous, like they're this, you know, they were kind of like what happened with the dark order before they shit the bed. And it's just, it's a waste. Like everyone hope, MJF is now becoming Hogan. Oh, Jesus. He is. No, think about it. He oh, is. Oh, God, no. He is. What, what has happened? Every person he's fought has job to him. Like, pretty much every person he fights now has job to him. Aussie Open, one of the greatest tag teams. You can't, you, the entire fight between FTR and them that fights later, it didn't matter. Because they lost in seven minutes to MJF and Cole. How could they be a threat? They couldn't be considered a threat if NJF beat them. And the worst thing is he beat them in not even not even a sweat. He didn't even sweat. He didn't even strain. He didn't even struggle in any way, shape, or form in that match. There's like one moment, one or two moments where the, the Righteous did like two moves, but the majority of the match was MJF without even breaking a sweat beating them. And I'm like, wow, way to destroy a tag team, jackass. Yay, but MJF's popular. It's like a Tony Khan's booking is like a parent who lets their kid dictate how to raise the kid. Hey, little Billy, what do you want for what do you want to eat for dinner? I want ice cream and sprinkles. All right, ice cream and sprinkles it is. What do you want to have? What do you want to wear to school? I want to wear pants on my head and I want to wear. I want to wear gloves on my shoe feet and I want to make sure I have 45 rubber bands all over my legs. All right, Billy, you got it. That's exactly what you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then every parent and every person who actually gives a shit about that kid looks at it and goes, I think you're fucking up, bro. And they go, don't you dare tell me to raise my child. That's Tony Khan when it comes to his talent. So, hey, uh, it's his action figure that he can play with them in the way that he wants to. But the thing of it is, is there's a way to get people over without the expenditure of everyone else. And that's yeah. the problem I have. You destroy other established talent to make the... Khan only knows how to book squashes. That's it. 
He only knows how to book squashes because look at all the people he hypes up as big. He has them fight pre-established talent and has the pre-established talent lose to him decisively instead of just letting them have a good match. He won't do that. He has to let them job. And I'm just like, okay, am I at this point where I'm just, uh, I guess from now on, every time I do a, uh, every time from now on before I do a prediction video, when it's an MJF match, I'm just going to pretend I got, I hit my own face with a hammer and then do oh, a prediction God. So I'm just going to pretend I got smacked really hard in the hammer and go, how would I think of this if I had a severe concussion? That's how I'm going to predict it now. That and the acclaims. I'm just going to go, okay, uh, well, the normal Jack would expect this. So concussion Jack, durr, that's going to be me every time. Two. Okay. All right. My opinion about this match. Okay, well, first of all, I was kind of surprised how it played out, honestly, because they were talking about the stuff with Jay White, and I think it would have made more sense if something dealing with Jay White or someone associated with him or connected to him would have interfered in the match so that MJF would have lost the title, titles, and then, and then you have a disappointed Adam coming back to that, and maybe they could just play up, play off of that, because like you said... Adam, it's not like Adam Cole has a fake injury going around going around Roger Strong's house looking like a fool playing around with him, you know. But um, yeah, he re- MGM really should have lost. It would have made sense if he would have lost because it's kind of stupid to have him having a tag to holding a a tag and, team. Uh, you know, random uh, William appears and just in time because we're talking about the first match of the of the actual show. You just missed the. Uh, the pre-show stuff so there you go i just went over my whole rant about mjf so it was the whole uh well don't hold back jack tell us how you really feel kind of thing <laughs> no, it's a, a ninja, uh, what's it? no like a pokemon a, a, a ninja panda appears <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. no, anyway, no what i was saying was kind of dumb that um mjf kept the titles they should have had jay white or someone associated with jay white interfere so that he would lose the titles because adam isn't there to help him defend those titles because the dude is literally out with an actual real injury with an actual foot injury and i'm thinking about when i messed up my ankle and I was supposed to be off my ankle for like eight weeks, and I didn't even do that because I didn't know about it because I didn't know about what was comp because it was screwing me over, and I was limping to work every day, walking, but yeah, whatever. But like I said, it's just silly. So we'll see where this goes. But I will say this. One good thing I do do actually like about, I like about the whole MJF thing, I like that when he says he's going to do something, he actually kind of delivers on that, and he kind of build his matches kind of around that. Like you said, he's going to, uh, what is it, show what's his name, use a body slam, what's his face, and show what's his face up, what's his face's ass, and all that other stuff. And he technically did it, and that's what he was trying to do the whole match, so you can't fault him. So at least he lives up to what he says, and you, get, you, you know what you're going to get when you see the match. The problem is just the outcome of the match. So yeah, yeah, MJF winning that was dumb. But I, I, I turn this back over to Ninja Panda here because I want to know why he thought MJF was going to win this match. Okay, uh, number one, sorry I'm late. Glad I'm back. Number two, hey Mark, nice haircut. Number three, oh, yeah. I'm literally wanting to see a ballistic video on how thick they make the plot armor on MJF right now because they're selling him like he's the main hot guy on this whole thing that was my thinking of it i didn't think it was going to be this bad but that's what they're doing and when i say this bad please tell me how in the blue blistering your expletive here did he beat the aussie open literally by himself and make them look like jobbers that's Aussie true. Right? No, he was going up against uh, what do you call it, the right. No, 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 no. But the first oh. time they fought, remember the entire match. Oh, you remember the entire match at all in. He never tagged Cole in once. Yeah, he literally did it by himself, and made him look like jobbers. In the Aussie Open, 
even when they lose, are not jobber type material. In this match, he made the crew look like jobbers. Again, another team that is not, not jobber material. They are mm. at least at a minimum of a 10 to 15 minute match. And they scratch out in what? Five, six? Uh, like almost le- less than 10. Uh, well, nine, nine, almost 10 minutes, but I don't know if that's counting like his promo at the beginning. Or yeah, what. he did do it like a two minute promo. Yeah. Just that. enough to heat up and cool down a hot pocket. Still, what <laughs> in the blue hell? Who is he, Goku now? Like, what the hell is going on? I, uh, Ninja, tell me I'm not wrong. I said to them, he is becoming this new, this company's Hulk Hogan. Tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. I don't want it. I don't want to accept well, I'll tell you something, brother. I'm better than you, and you know it. Tell me you couldn't see MJF backstage saying, nah, that doesn't work with me. Nah, that doesn't work with me, brother. Right down to the <laughs> teeth. <laughs> he would totally do that. I, I already said, literally, he. I, I, I said, there's a way to book a guy. I get like he's a he. It worked when he was a heel, him doing underhanded shit, but not as a baby face because it's like the way they do it is that every match he's in, he wins. He's he's become the lull Lesnar, then the lull Moxley. Now it's the lull JF. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, guess. And I told them. You missed it. I said, from now on, anytime I do an MJF or a claim match, I'm going to pretend as if I got a severe concussion and then do my prediction. (laughs) That completely works. Like, when we were talking about this match, I was seriously contemplating going back to the old school, angry, nose blowing smoke, towel around my neck, eating muffins me. I just (laughs) didn't have time for it. But (laughs) still, that match pissed me off. God, it pissed me off. Like, and and that's a pregame match, and I'm just like, oh, this is really going to be a good example of what the night's going to lead up to. I will say in a positive, though, one positive, of the whole match card, it was probably one of, if not one of two, of the entire card, which I was like, okay, well, if uh, on a 10 match card only one or two is bad okay that's fine because i don't really count the pre-show as part of the card i part, consider that um <clears throat> what my friend used to call them uh he used to call them um what what is it called when you you do like barbecue outside in the uh in the parking lot what are those called tailgating oh yeah Damn tailgating you. he calls he calls my friend used to call the pre-shows the tailgate matches because that's that's the time when everyone's like well, I'm gonna go to the merch stand before the show starts. Like, like, so like, no one really cares about what happens on the pre-show. A hundred percent, as invested as they would the main card. But for the main card, it's kind of like in my head, I'm like trying to make a positive spin. They did for me get the worst match out of the way. So I'm like, okay, fine, okay. <laughs> that is true. At least they got the worst one out first. No uh, thoughts, Johnny. Okay, so my opinion of the match, um, I felt like the match was decent in certain aspects. I think it was still, I would say this, at least like from the perspective of how, you know, MJF always has like this little gimmick, this little attitude, whatever. I think this probably was one of the matches where he seemed to have fought the most intense, like he was really fighting seriously um, this time around. Um, but I also don't agree that he won the match, like, without struggling that much. I mean, considering that he doesn't have his tag team partner, Adam Cole, you would think he would struggle a lot more during this match, or you would think that maybe MJF is going to have, like, some backup, like, to cheat his way to, to the top, and I actually kind of missed that a little bit about him. Like, MJF is always known to be... A cheater like he always cheats to win these kind of matches so it's kind of weird that he's not doing gimmicks like that anymore in my opinion so that that's all i, I gotta say about this match so in this one the only one getting points are me and william everyone else went for the righteous because you know it made sense and i wouldn't have minded seeing the righteous because it gives them more more exposure and more promos and stuff but eh you know how it goes you know how 
You know how uh, Nick do with his match, um, his action figures. So, anyways, uh, next we got Eddie Kingston going up against Kasuyori Shibata, uh, singles match for the Ring of Honor World Championship and the Strong Openweight Championship. So there was a chance that Eddie could have uh, lost both. And um, so yeah, it was uh, it was a good match. It's pretty decent. Uh, Eddie really drew his all in there. Of course, he had the famous you know chop contest that he always does. Who could take more chops and all that, but. But yeah, it was pretty crazy. It got pretty intense near the end. There were lots of uh, painful submission moves and stuff, and a lot of Eddie, you know, trying to fight his way out of them so he doesn't uh, tap out and all that. And uh, of course, the most important part is that when Eddie won, he actually earned Shibata's respect. So that was that was pretty awesome, man. And yeah, like I said, his, his promos were always full of heart and everything, man. He was, I, I, I for those either before or after the match, he was talking a lot about like how much. That meant that meant to him just the opportunity to be in the ring with Shibata and give a good fight, you know. So and like Jack says, he even said like, "Yeah, when I was in the G1 climax, that changed me, man. That changed me." So I'm like, "Oh, he's listening to Jack. He's talking to Jack behind behind the scenes." <laughs> Jack is like, you know, when you go out there, it's the G1 climax. Say, so it changed you, man. Trust me. You know what I mean? No, it really does change people before and after, like that, and the best of Super Juniors. Because if you come into those tournaments. They're not like going into these tournaments aren't like going into like a king of the ring or going into the whatever the fuck the four pillars bullshit tournament is like these are actual endurance tournaments like you even if you're eliminated statistically you have to fight so it's literally like every match matters and because of that you have to fight every kind of ability that you've never faced before and if you're injured you're out. Like if you're severely injured, you're really out. But if you're injured during the match, like there, I've seen turn during these tournaments, I've seen people like, um, with like severely like injured arms or legs, and they still keep going. And it's like holy shit. So it's like, oh well, this guy got injured uh, yesterday. Uh, he got he had like fourteen uh, dragon whips to his leg. It's like, well, you gotta come back tomorrow. Bye. And you're like, what the f-? like? And like that's how it is. And and Kingston, even though he didn't do great point wise in the tournament, he actually had to step up a lot, and he did. And I think since then, since he's been recognized by New Japan and recognized by um, you know his peers, essentially not just there, and he's also taken out of the toxicity of AEW. Because realistically, I'm like everyone wants to play this whole oh Punk and them cause the toxic shit but that was the case why did kingston leave aew i mean he's been in more in ring of honor than anything else because he doesn't like the toxic clicky favoritism he just wants the wrestling and if you want the wrestling you go to the place where they respect wrestling so he went to new japan so i think because of that and he earned i mean you guys know i made no qualms i didn't like kingston and as a character he's he's okay but as a as a wrestler i actually do respect him and if that's for me to say that that's better than any title he could win no i'm kidding i'm like <laughs> i'm like, I'm like but no for him to earn shibata's respect though legitimately i think he would even say the same thing earning shibata's respect is probably one of the hardest things to do because he doesn't respect that many people he likes people but he doesn't respect that many people there's only a handful of people you actually like respect. A lot of people respect him, but to get his is very, very difficult. Um, but for him to literally say like, oh yeah, he's good. For him to say that, I bet I guarantee you Kingston would be like, this is on my bucket list. Like this, this tears almost any title I could win. Because in the end, tit- titles are essentially tin, but respect is a thing. When you, when one of your idols respects you it's like a whole nother thing um i mean hell even danielson even said of his dream matches there's been two dream matches he's always wanted to have though number one was saber but number two or number two was saber and number one was always shibata he always wanted to fight shibata but he never could so if only they were in the same building if only (laughs) Mm -hmm. these but I, I loved it. I loved it. It was just Strike City. I freaking loved it. Just Strike. Oh, everything strike, with uh, strike. Kingston becomes Strike City. <laughs> yeah, but everything was Kingston and Shibata. They were both like, wow, 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 wow. You can literally just take the audio 
and then just cut to William with a giant slab of meat just going <laughs> <laughs> and it, it would be the same difference it would be the- <laughs> why you have it William I don't, oh, why you have it ninja I have no idea but just the visual of you would just it's like a big, know, big like, pork, a big pork line. Like, <laughs> you know, I might just do that next episode. I might just come out with big rapper ribs, just wow, just slap, slap, <laughs> or like, or like that joke that they said, like, like that the the last pay per view. Remember, they were saying like it was who was it? It was Hobbs versus who was the who's the person Hobbs fought? Wardlow, was right? The, yeah, was it, guys. was it yeah. Wardlow? Yeah. yeah, where they just no, said, no. it wasn't Wardlow, was it? It was not Wardlow. Mm. Who was it? Was it Cage? Yeah, Brian Cage, I think. Yeah, you know, another big guy. It was Cage. I guess yeah, they, yeah, I guess yeah. It was, it was Cage. Cage. It was yeah. uh, Hobbs, and it was Samoa Joe. Yeah, because Wardlow just came. Because Wardlow just came back from, I think, uh, being an injury or whatever. Mm. Um, but like, I remember the crowd was going beefy man, beefy man. I'm like, no. This is beef slaps, right? All yep. around, nonstop beef slap city. <laughs> Whack. That sounds dirty, but you know what I mean. <laughs> or I, I, he would call it two big men slapping me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I, I legitimately, I, I like, I loved it. It was just pure striking, and I liked seeing it. Um, I'm glad they didn't put the pure title on the line because I'm like, I think Shibata could still go with that belt, man. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Kingston's finally at a place where he's kind of respected in, in the wrestling circle. Um, even though he'll never be as respected without tassels, but you know, he's, <laughs> he's in a good place for me. Uh, yeah. what do you, what do you think? What do you think, uh, Jupy? or when, oh, or Jupy? Panda go. oh, Panda, sorry, Panda. What do you think, Panda? Oh yeah. I used to get we a lot of him. We missed him. <laughs> I used to give him a lot of hell in the beginning, you know. I used to call him the dollar, the the dollar store Dudley boy, and all this other jazz. And Burger but if you remember a few nights before the G one happened, you remember Jack. I was talking to you, and I said, you know what? Maybe a trip to Japan might do him some good. It would definitely change him. And surely enough, it did. I mean, like he yeah, he quit Burger King and... for 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 a uh, what's it called for Wendy's for Wendy's, yeah. He definitely, he definitely, uh, stepped to the plate on this one. This was a damn good match. Like this actually was almost New Japan standard. Like it was it a was. fairly good match. They were beating the living tar out of each other, which I enjoyed at every given minute. Which is weird for me to say about an Eddie Kingston match. I may want to go get my psych checked out after that. But... <laughs> Like, it was actually a really good match. And for Shibata to actually, you know, acknowledge him, yeah, that's a pretty huge freaking deal. So, I mean, dude, all in all, it was a damn good match. It was worth it. All right, all right. I actually like I like this match. It's pretty cool, but you know, um, of course, there's some elements to these types of matches that I'm, not, I'm still not too big on, like the strong style strike stuff. I mean, I just think it gets silly after it just it just looks silly to me. But I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's it's, it's just a guy thing. Yeah, see the two guys slapping me. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's the what modern mean, day. Modern it's day. the modern day version of the. Uh, you guys remember the '80s? They used to do the the test of strength with the arms, and they go, you know. Yeah, and I thought that, was, and I, I, I kind of thought that looked silly too. I mean, yeah. you know, but um, I I just think it just looks a little, just a, just 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 a tad bit silly. It's okay. But outside of that, I think the match is okay. I think um, Kingston, like you said, I think Kingston is a bit better than what I recall him being. Um, he still comes across as a guy that's pissed off all the time, but, you know, that just seems to be his character in general. But, um, yeah, I thought it was a pretty interesting match, and I really like Shibata. I know I was going to lose this one, and I chose Shibata to be the contrarian because I really like Shibata more than Kingston. But, yeah, I think it's cool, and the fact that, 
Kingston's reaction to having Shibata's respect, I think that was the best part of it. Because you could, it, I mean, because it actually felt like something that was genuine and not something that would have been scripted. And I like stuff like that. What did you think, Johnny? Um, I like this match. It was one of the most, one of the more like decent matches and more like the technical type matches. It's really, it's really it really has to go old yeah. school. That's what I liked about it. And it's, it's just them going straight to business, finding it out, duking it out, and they're both very good technical wrestlers. And the fact that um, Shibata, I don't know, respects Eddie Kingston, like that's that's a big deal. I mean, that, that that's that, that's awesome. I mean, because Shibata is a phenomenal wrestler, and um, you know, I actually like this title because it's not like a weird match like MGF one, and it's not nothing weird like the you know the match that's gonna go on after this one, like the <clears throat> Young Bucks match. Like it's something more I don't know, palatable, palatable for a pay per view, in my opinion. So I, I'm actually glad that I'm like, yeah, I like this match. Hmm. All right. And so let me see here. So basically for this match, uh, Johnny and myself and Jack, we all went for Eddie Kingston. And yeah, Jupes and William went for Shibata. So there we go. And let's see what else is going on. So we, 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 have, we have loyalty to Shibata, not to the I Burger King. I love Shibata too, but I was just also like, mm, I don't think they're gonna drop the belt. So oh, no, I knew, I knew Burger Shibata Kingston, was it became Arby Kingston, huh? I will say that what, uh, it, what I also will say it's a little bit of a side note, but it's the same kind of thing. Um, am I the only one that kind of finds it funny but kind of entertaining as hell that since Shibata doesn't speak English, he just uses Google Translate to talk? I just yeah. think that's hilarious. He's like, I think Eddie Kingston is a good wrestler. It'll be just like. Like, look, it's so angry. Just <laughs> Google translates. I'm like, kudos. Like, I will give you kudos. That is pretty funny. Yeah. I love funny from hiring a translator all the time. Just use your Google Translate, you know? But the only problem with Google Translate is that it really screws up some things because, it yeah. Does. It, it's it does. It'll be mm -hmm. like, instead of, it'll, instead of him saying, I'm going to whoop your ass, it'll be like, I want your grandmother to bake corn, and you're like, "What? No, big <laughs> God. Okay, okay. I, 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 no, I'm trying to figure out any Japanese words where that would actually. Be. <laughs> actually oh, okay. if so, anyway, guys, good. to uh, get back on track here, we got uh, Chris Statlander, no longer an Indian, but the uh, AEW TBS champ, going up against Julia Hart with Brody King in the background. And I gotta say, I did like uh, Ju Julia Hart's like entrance, her overall character. She really plays all the, you know, the, the dark thing well. And to her credit, despite the uh, size difference, more like the muscle mass, because honestly, like, I don't know, she seems tiny, but she wasn't, like, like Chris wasn't, like, really towering over her, just maybe an inch or two taller. But, um, but yeah, Julia got her through her paces, lots of submission moves. Chris Statlander, of course, made a difference because she had, you know, our power moves. In the end, uh, Chris Statlander won. But, um, I, I, I mean... Julia doesn't really appear too much in her pay-per-views aside from just being a ballet whenever uh, they, you know, the House of Black is there. I think this one did a good job of showing the audience, like, just what Julia can do. Even though she didn't win, I'm sure she impressed everyone because that was a good match. That was probably one of her best matches she had. And just how she um, convincingly gave Chris trouble, I mean, that was pretty cool. I mean, I was, I was almost rooting for her to win near the end because it's like, you know, Jack opened all the ideas during our uh, last thing. It did sound more interesting if she won, but you know, Chris can uh, retain a bit longer. But you guys, let me know your your thoughts on that. Um, I was disappointed, but not upset that Julia lost because I was like, like I said it before, I was rooting for her. But which I'm happy they did did this. They did show the potential that she does have for being a champion further down the road and that's what i like that's really what i was more concerned about was like is it going to be a squash like don't make it a squash that's all i ask you know but it wasn't it was actually like a really good competitive match uh julia is proving herself to be more of a mainstay wrestler for the women's division which is a great thing because they need more 
active women that aren't Britt Baker 17 more times in a row, which I like Britt Baker, but come on, you know, it's changed. Uh, to quote Zengi from the Street Fighter movie, change the channel. But that's that's, that's kind of that's kind of how I am. But with Julia, it was actually a good match. Like I was like, oh, this is actually a pretty damn good match. And it also had a lot of good back and forth. It really, to me, felt like it could have gone either way. And I wasn't upset that Statlander won. I was kind of more like, oh man. But it was a good match, and I was like, oh, this is a good match. Um. I do agree with uh, Mark. I wish there were more women's matches in this show, but hey, if there's had to be one, I'm glad it was this one. So that's that's uh, that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, I actually got to agree with Jack. Like at first, I was just like, "eh, Statlander's gonna squash," but like, yeah, I was actually surprised. This actually went on the distance. Uh, Julia actually has some decent skills, like. You know, with her constantly being as, you know, a valet to Brody, you really don't see that that much or that often. So when it actually, you know, when it actually came out and she was actually giving Statlander trouble, it was kind of a surprise. And I'm actually glad that they did that because it actually showcases her rather than it's just, okay, she's just a background character. Mm, let's just run her over and call it a day. <laughs> like, they actually gave her the spotlight, even though she didn't win. So it was a very interesting match. Like at first I was rooting for Statlander. And then after like after a while, I was actually rooting for Julia to win. I wasn't mad either way. Uh all in all, that was a good match. And I do wish that they would uh make more examples as that in the women's division, because if they would, the spotlight would actually be a little bit more on them. It would be a little bit more equal as opposed to the way it is now. So yeah, overall, good match. Yeah, I have to agree. I like this match too. Even though I missed the finish because the my connection or I mean the at the um bleacher bleacher report kind of oh, screwed yeah, up. I remember you got so mad because like that was the main match you wanted to win and that was one of the start fucking up. Yeah. But eh, it's okay. I mean I, I did go back and see highlights of it, so it's all right. But um yeah, I was really I was glad that Julie could hold her her she held her own during that match. I thought that was awesome. I like how it didn't come across like a squash match. But for her to take two tombstones like that, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That was an awesome finish. She grabbed her and got her to tombstone pile driver, but to show off her strength, <laughs> didn't let her go, picked yeah. her up again, and then finished her. That was epic. That was like, yeah. you know, showing off the strength, man. Yeah, I got that for double sure. bomb. That was pretty cool. The fact that yeah that they have they managed that so I think that was pretty cool to see, and I think anybody who would talk bad about this match, in a general sense, regardless if you're into storylines or the booking or not, and just focus on the match as just a regular match, I say it was pretty darn good. I mean, especially for Julia Hart because in all honesty. I never really saw much of her outside of her being with the House of Black. And like you said, just as a valet. But you know what? Once you get scissored, whoo, things get things must change for you or something to better yourself so you don't ever get scissored again. I, no, I the funny know. thing is I'm doing this with the acclaim, but I'm thinking more of, of uh, what's it called? Uh, of Jake, no, of Brutus the Barber Beefcake doing that because he had the giant ones. Oh, <laughs> hey, Jack, what if the, you know what? We're going to leave Jack alone. He's already face palmed for the day. Okay. So, Johnny, what did you think of this match? Yeah, sadly, um, I don't really remember too much about this match. I don't know if I kind of like maybe fell asleep a little bit during the match or something. I don't really have a good memory of this entire match. Um, I do find it impressive that Julia Hart does have the skills and she can hold her own in this match. I kind of actually wish Julia Hart would have won this match. I think that would have been more of a, it would have added a little bit more of a shock value to the match because it's, it's one thing that it's impressive to see how she's able to fight. Like, I guess this is like her first match, right? She's fighting by herself. 
if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, I think this is like her, because she was like on a twenty-something match win streak, from what I yeah. remember. Yeah, mostly on dark though. But I mean, this is like the first time on the, on you know the grander stage. Yeah, on the on the on the bigger scene. Yeah, she is the first. Uh, I think, yeah, maybe they, she should have just won this match. Anyways, I'm not really mad about Chris Statlander winning this because you know I don't have nothing against her. And I actually find her cool because in the media scrum, she was actually very, she was very, very, very professional the whole time. And I kind of like that about her because of all the toxic BS that's happening behind the stage in the AEW. It's so good to have some wrestlers that can kind of rise above that and still be professional and, I don't know, just handle things in a, in a professional setting despite all odds, you know, despite all the controversies, but, uh, but yeah, I still, I still like this match. It was good. It's better than hey, the next. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> this is more for William's benefit. He wasn't here last time. William, unless he's uh, eating muffins angrily again. Ninja. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. nice. <laughs> the queen of boobs. Let me just put her somewhere safe. Mm hmm. Uh, yep. And speaking of boobs, it's actually uh, Ninja Ninja uh, Jupy's birthday today. Of course, as a lady, we will not ask the age, but like, you know, kind of like Chun Li. I don't care. Don't ask the age. But, uh, but yeah, there we go. I don't care. You can ask my age. Yeah, but this, no, this, my we're, we're people on YouTube. We have no age, so we'll just do that. So, anyways, uh, I am no, 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 no. this ninja is the same is the age you want her to be. Hmm. And and quote, always and younger for me, than what I am. And for me, to quote Fry from Futurama, thanks to denial, I'm immortal. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, so everyone already went with the with the match already. Yep. Okay. So for this one, uh, me and William were the only ones faithful to our beloved Chris Statlander, and uh, everyone else went for. Uh, yeah, I don't know if she has a figure. If she has a figure, there's a risk it might be her older Judy or one. But I'll see if she has one or not of Judy Hart. Because that would be awesome. I want a dark Julia Hart figure, you know. But um, yeah. So everyone else went for Julia Hart and everything. And because um, we were thinking along the lines of it would be more interesting if she won. Yeah, that's true. All right, so the next match we got here is the Young Bucks, uh, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson going up against the Lucha Brothers with Penta, Cero, Miedo, and Ray Phoenix with Alex Abra uh, Alex Abrantes just kind of loitering there. Uh, going up against, oh, no, it's more tag teams. Yeah, four-way tag team match. So Young Bucks, Lucha Bros, uh, The Guns, Austin and uh, Colton Gun, and Orange Cassidy and Hook. Which is literally like them eating chips, and it's like, hey, we should be a tag team or something. And Hook's like, yep, I, I like that. They're in the, uh, you know, the little playback promo package they do. But anyways, yeah, it's a crazy match. Um, unfortunately, right now it's been a couple of days. All I know is, you know, flippy shit, flippy shit. You know, flippy here, flippy there. They're flipping everywhere, kind of thing. And um. Yeah, I don't even remember, like, honestly, I don't even remember, like, Cassie doing his orange punch or Hook doing his takedowns. I don't remember nothing. Just, just stuff. But in the end, unfortunately, the Young Bucks won. And this means they have a future opportunity for some time down the line or whatever to go up against the, uh, oh, God, I guess MGF, huh? No, they're the Ring of Honor ones. Uh, I FTR. guess they go up against FTR, yeah, to see if they'll win the title. So we'll see how yeah. that goes. It, well, yeah, yeah. Master this match. Any thoughts, guys? This one, I completely blanked out. I don't even remember. Like like I said, Cassie and Hook were there. I don't even remember them doing anything. I'm sure they did. Hey. I just don't remember, you know? Hey, this is me. This is me before the match. Hey. What's up? This is me after the match. Damn. Fucking bucks. <laughs> I, I mean, like I said, I, I, I called them winning because I'm like, well, as soon as I see the Bucks got it in the match, uh, 
Uh huh. And I love how literally the crowd, the whole crowd was like, boo, because they didn't, and they were shocked. Like they were actually surprised people weren't cheering them. Hmm. See, remember what I said earlier? Remember what I was saying earlier about the thing about the uh, young folks doing the thing on Instagram and stuff? I think that might have been what prompted it. Yeah, because they're shocked that people don't like them anymore. Maybe because you force feed it down our damn throats. So in other words, they're like if Charlotte had a twin sister and they were tag team champs. Well, also the fact of the matter is it's so they also is like he's like, I love how he was saying, Oh, they're mad because they think we're responsible for their favorite wrestlers getting fired. I'm like, you are. You literally are. Like and now you're basically like he's gonna be for your competition now, and it's gonna just give you guys more ratings trouble because you know the ratings. I don't know if he's gonna do it or not, but if he does, you know the ratings are gonna about fucking blow up. The the Bucks are the kind of people. The, the Bucks have the mentality of a person who is caught on camera saying racial slurs and then says, "That's not who I am." I don't know where they got this idea from. I'm like, we saw it. We know who you are. <laughs> it's the same principle but what the thing that makes me laugh is the whole crowd going boo and then the commentator trying to save it and going you know what this means Taz we're gonna get FTR versus the Bucks 4 and I'm all like there. who wanted that <laughs> who wanted that <laughs> They had their, they had their three their best two out of three matches. Yeah. They don't need them again. They're, they're they're, other they were good they with that. On. They were good with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason there's no such thing as th- there's no such thing as a three out of four. It's a three. It's a two out of three. Yeah, give it another year or so, maybe you know, like yeah, give it a year. Give it give it to like I said before when I when I made my predictions, I said who I think should win would be the guts. Who do I think will win would be the Bucks, and I was right. I mean, it's like what uh, Rock used to say: "Is their name on the door?" Yeah, and it's not. I mean, but you know, guys, we got to think about it this way: What do they have? I mean, they're they're so they are not given any opportunities. I mean, if they had a series of belts, I'd understand. If their name was on the building, I'd understand. But they're just. You know, you look at Orange Cassidy, he's handed everything. But, you know, the Bucks, they never get a chance. They just never get that chance. One day, one day, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but, yeah, I, I I, literally, two matches I couldn't give less of a shit about. A claim match and this match. And they just so happen to be tag team matches. Which is funny, because I was more invested in the Athena match than I was in either of those tag team matches. That's that's hilarious. I gotta give you an Athena figure. Just thought of that. If I ever see her at Walmart, I'll just just grab. Send it. me a, send me a link when you do, because I want to get one too. Hmm. You, you hear that, Wendy? If I run into Athena at Walmart, I'm gonna grab her. I'm I'm gonna grab her good. Oh hey. shit! He's got the towel. Where? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh! Uh, got the towel. Got the towel. I had him up. I, I had him up for you. He got the towel. Um, Come on, man. So oh, you grab to... Athena all you want, but when she bought a slant, when she used uh, Billy Stark in the batter and it made you go away, I'm not going to help you. First off, one of the elephants in the room in that match. Why in the hell are they turning Orange Cassidy and Hook into the wrestling version of Jay and Silent Bob? What the fuck is going on there? Number two, the Young Bucks won. We're dealing with fucking children all over again. That's why the towel is back. I swear, these two are like the Charlotte Flair of tag team wrestling. Anytime things start to progress and starts getting good, here we go again, and it's a, a Buster cluck of just stupidity where no matter what happens, they're going to keep the belt. Again, another big density of... No, the other way, Jack, the other way. Between the two, <laughs> I can't fucking stand it. Like, this was the one... Like, I'm sorry, we're going to have to change our brand. We are no longer the number one help for sleep deprivation. It's any match with the Young Bucks. Any of them. 
They are the number one because I saw that and I went dead to sleep for the entirety of that match. Of course, it woke me up from the stench of horse shit that was going on with that entire match, but it still made me go to sleep. It was freaking ridiculous. I hated that match. Screw the Young Bucks and the horse they rode in on all the way back to New Japan. I'm done with them. I can't stand no, it. They burned that fucking bridge a long time ago. Trust me. The New Japan oh, yeah. doesn't want them. <laughs> oh, New Japan doesn't the want them. They burned, they burned two separate bridges. They burned impact they burned both new japan and impacts you know how bad you have to be to burn impacts bridge i mean god wait what did they do to him with, with impact they kept scott steiner for god's sakes they um they literally refused to uh back when they were tna they refused to wrestle uh matches that they were slated to wrestle uh when they were still starting in tna so, like, they were actually, like, refusing to wrestle and claiming, oh, well, I can't. He's stuck in traffic. And then, and then, but he'd actually be, like, one of them would actually be in the locker room. So, they'd actually, like, deliberately, that way they wouldn't lose to these established tag teams. Um, and, like, even even the fucking, and here, here's, a, here's an implement of their legacy. When I talk about the history of the Bucks, and I literally say, I'm not the only one who hates the Bucks. Like they have a long, long paper trail of people who fucking hate them. Think about it this way: one of the most nice, friendly people duos in all of wrestling are the Motor City Machine Guns. Legitimately, two of the nicest guys ever. They hate the Bucks. If they hate the Bucks, that's like Ned Flanders wanting you dead. You're like, what the hell happened? And what did you do? <laughs> I mean, keep in mind, the Motor City Machine Guns didn't even hate Vince Russo. How, if they didn't hate Russo, but they hate the Bucks, what did the Bucks do? <laughs> Super kicked his cat wow. into public or something. Into the traffic, I mean. Something. Something happened. Super wow. kicked their grandma. But anyway, they super kicked the kid, their cat across the street or something. I mean, every every tag team has a legacy. I think every tag team has a legacy that they, every good established tag team has a legacy that they leave behind. Uh, you look at like the Legion of Doom, most decorated tag team worldwide. You look at the Dudley Boys, they were known for. <laughs> oh, I was about to go there. The, the Dudley Boys uh, are known for basically reintroducing the concept of hardcore wrestling to a mainstream audience. You have the, the Hardy Boys, known for their high flying antics. Edge and Christian, known for their ground mat, yet kind of sneaky tactics that made them really popular. The Buck, the Bucks' oh, legacy... And they're the creators of the TLC match. Don't forget that's that. That's true. That's true. The Bucks' legacy is that they made flips boring. They made flips and kicks boring. Like, that's it. Like, everything they do... They, they are so... They did to flips and kicks what Hogan did to leg drops. <laughs> oh God! No one no, gives a Dad. shit. Yeah, no one gives now, a shit now. about a leg drop. No, Literally, no, at this now, point, now, yeah. the Rockers with two Marty Janettis. Yeah, they. That's that's what. What's his name called him? Oh, freaking Jim Jim Cornette told them that. He said, no, 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 not Jim Cornette. Someone said that. Briscoe, no, oh, Briscoe. No, 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 no. It wasn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was Jay, Jay Briscoe. Yeah, Jay Briscoe literally said that. He's all like, he's like, how the hell you got two? It's like, oh, look, they're the New Age Rockers. But how are you going to be the Rockers when you got two Genetis? It's true. They are both oh, wait Genetis. A I've never heard that before. Yeah, Jay Briscoe said that about them when they were feuding. And Tama Tonga, I mean, Tama Tonga doesn't trust them. Mark Briscoe doesn't trust them. So many, they've burned so many fucking bridges. Uh, they've burned more bridges than Jeff Bridges. And his last name is Bridges. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so, what's so eventually, I guess they're so bad that not even WWE's going to want them in a couple of years, huh? They, they refuse. No, that's the thing. Um, years ago, the WWE came calling back in like 2014, 2015 uh, to try to get them. And they had literally, this is from wrestling speculation, so I'm not 100% sure, but it does line up to how they are. 
It's on YouTube, so it must be true. I'm kidding. (laughs) (laughs) No, this is from a a head WWE, a guy who was a WWE writer at the time. Uh, He said um, there's only a couple times he's ever seen Vince McMahon, like, legit pissed off. Um, uh, This was around the time they did that cease and desist about the click thing. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, uh, Vince, despite all that bullshit, was actually trying to get them signed. Because he went, oh, hey... They're an established tag team. You know, we're trying to build up a tag division. Uh, this is like right at the height when they were bringing in like FTR and or the Revival and all these other tag teams. And they're like, hey, we should, you know, pad out the things like have the Ascension, all these guys and focus a little more on the tag team division. And then um, he contacted the, he basically sent a fax with an offer to where the Bucks were in Japan at the time. And apparently... According to the writer, um, he said Vince was so pissed off with whatever they sent him, and he's like, I didn't know what they sent him. Super dick party. No, they literally, he said, I didn't know what they sent him, but they sent him something that pissed him off so bad that he literally, like, apparently he took his Diet Coke and he threw it against the window and cracked it. Because he drinks Diet Coke all the time. And uh, I'm like, oh, That's good shit. and then and then later he said, I went to go find out what it was. And I asked uh, he said he, he asked someone who was working backstage what exactly they sent him. And he said, um, apparently they they Xeroxed a copy of their ass. Like they <laughs> literally sat on a copy or Xerox their ass and faxed it to him. So it wasn't super dick party. It was super ass party. OK, yeah. But I'm like, the thing that's funny about that is that this sounds like something that Vince would find funny. You think? But right? It was towards yeah. someone else, I'm sure. Just not right. if he was if he was familiar with you and cool with you, yeah, but not for strangers. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, if Brock um, did it, he'd probably be okay. Mm-hmm. But let this sink in for a moment. You have screwed up so bad <laughs> that they would rather take a guy who was the head of said party that you had the cease and desist order on, on the Wolfpack thing, a guy who was the co-creator of your competition's company, and the guy who literally mocked your company by knocking down a chair that looked just like Triple H's and also pulling up a golden shovel in the middle of a match, mocking you. You know you screwed up when they hire him back before they ever will talk to you. Did you see that video that got posted from their Instagram Live? No. It was a clip from their Instagram Live where they were walking downtown in London during All In, and they were, like, legitimately butthurt that on the side of one of the buses, like the double-decker buses, had a WWE promotion. (laughs) (laughs) And then they're like, oh, don't they know who we are? I'm like, and literally the chat was like, God, talk about super butthurt party. <laughs> right? It wasn't a WWE pay-per-view, but it definitely was a backlash. Oh. Oh, that's probably rare, honestly. That's probably worth something, though. Yeah, I'm key. Well, I got I got another copy, so I'll I'll see how much that one's worth. <laughs> this wow. one, I mean, maybe it'll leave the box someday, but I got one or two that will never leave the box, you yeah. know. We'll see how much you're worth later. Anyways, uh, yeah, go on, guys. Um, there. Uh, what what oh, do you think, Johnny? Oh boy. So. Oh boy. Oh. This podcast, you know, we all agree that some of the rest, obviously, the young bucks are the elephant in the room. But um, some of the wrestlers were kind of like I don't know, like the Lucha Brothers. I don't know. I was actually, you know, I would have preferred the guns to have won this match compared to having this freaking um, Young Bucks winning this match. I, honestly, I, I just didn't really like the match at all uh, whenever the Young Bucks would show up in the ring because it's just so boring. It's just generic, flippy shit. They make the Lucha Libre look really bad. Like, compared to their flippy shit... Compared to the authentic, you know, Lucha Libre, you know, style. Would be shit. Yeah. Done the right. 
with uh, Lucha Brothers, and then you see the Young Bucks, like, what the fuck is this shit? Like, like, man, what is this? You know, well, it's just like, damn, this match is like fucking boring. Well, I, I like to think of it like with the Lucha Brothers, especially like Ray Phoenix, I think of them as like very much more, they both do flip, flippy stuff, but the Lucha Brothers are far more like precise. You know what I mean? Like they're kind of like, they hit their marks. Like they, they pre-plan what they're going to do before they do it. And the Bucks are kind of like more like, they treat flipping like a kid jumping into a ball pit. And they're like, well, the balls will catch me. <laughs> You know what? Now that you mention that, I remember like uh, I I could I couldn't tell you specifically, but I remember a few a couple of spots with um, especially with the Bucks where they were like trying to do something, and I was like, okay, that looked like it was probably a botch, or like you like he just totally missed the mark and had to try to play it all. And I and I noticed that a lot whenever I do see a a, a match with the Bucks in it, so. But I have to agree with Johnny on that one. Like, you know, they kind of make the... I mean, just look at like Bad Lucha style or something. Like, the Lu yeah. Bad Lucha Libre style. Yeah. Sorry sorry to cut you off, Johnny. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is so bad that I would have preferred an Orange Cassidy and Hook winning this match compared to the Young Bucks. Like, that has to be the most disappointing match of the entire pay-per-view, in my opinion. Um... The match had potential, but the fact that the Young Bucks won this match, I forgot how they won it. I don't care. I don't know. Like, what is this crap? This match is horrible. And um, the thing is, between all of them, it would have been kind of cool if, if Cassidy and Hook won because they were the only ones that haven't already been tag team champs. Yeah, and I remember, didn't you? Didn't uh, didn't Johnny pick? Hook and Cassidy for that very reason that they've never been champions. He he picked the guns. Oh, who picked the guns? I, I did. Yeah, I did. yeah. Me, yeah. me, me and Jukes, we both yeah. went for Cassidy and Hook. Johnny and then, went for the guns. And then, and then John Johnny and me picked or Johnny and I were or, oh, I was originally gonna pick the guns, but then I went who's gonna win as opposed to who I wanted to win. Yeah. <laughs> William went for Lucha Bros. You were the only one that got a point because you were the one that went for the young bucks. And again, it was more like a you know, who you think is going to win as opposed to who you want to win. Should have been and, and the we best all friends. Know, <laughs> and we all know what you, are we at all know. Like I said, I would choose a cricket over the like, Young Bucks winning a match. The cricket has no chance. But maybe the cricket can do some flippy shit to get out the way of the Young Bucks C4 kicks. You know, because apparently they were trying to be creative and do something different that time. So they put Chad Dynamite to their shoes or whatever, and then and it backfired. Like Hogan with his flash paper against um, Ultimate Warrior. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I just did not like this match. I hated this match. I didn't give my opinion. Did I? I just did not care much for this match. I didn't pay much attention. I don't remember anything about this match. I think, I I think you were still mad. About because like Mutual Report started working during that match and you were still pissed that okay, so the match you cared about, it started fucking no. this match. No, it wasn't it started... this one. It wasn't this one. Mm. It was the other one where it it it, 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 it oh, worked right. the entire time. And it was the one match I said I just don't give a crap about at all in any way, shape, or form. Hmm. We're gonna get there, but like I said, yeah, with this match. There. This match, it was just pointless. I don't know. Yeah, I really wish one of the other teams would have won. Or it would have been funny if none of them would have won and the best friends just randomly showed up and they won. And how, that would have been really weird. How, it funny would have made sense. how funny would it have been, just as a theory, how funny would it have been, now Now, follow me on this, if it was Ray Phoenix, Nick, uh, Nick Jackson, uh, Cassidy, and... Um, who was the other team? The Guns? Like, Colton? And they all hit each other all with one specific move, and then they all landed one shoulder on each each other, and then the ref's like... <laughs> that would have been hilarious. Just all of, them like in a, all of them in like a triangle, like all of them in a square on top of each other, and then the ref would be like... And then everyone's like, crowd's like, what the fuck just happened? 
like I'm just waiting for somebody to get to get pissed off at the Young Bucks and just do a Samoa Joe style super botch. Like God. they go for a high fly move and some, and they just pull Samoa Joe and just move clean the hell out of the way and just like <laughs> right on doing. their face. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I just think it's just so dumb that they had to win this because who wants to see them going up against FTR again? I know I don't give a crap about it. And like I said, it's supposed to be a best two out of three, and then now they have to do this four match nonsense. Why are they doing that when they have other teams that could probably do better with FTR as opposed to the Bucks, which means they probably booked the match because Tony Khan probably feared for his life or he's going to get kicked in the face. I mean, who knows at this point? Yeah, the thing is, um, and it's going to keep going because the thing is, whenever, I guess, full gear comes out and they start announcing the matches, guess what match I'm not going to give two shits about, right? Because <laughs> of Young Bucks versus FTR, even though they're going to hype And I like FTR, that's the problem. Over, but, you know. And, and, and I, I like know, FTR. I know they're, they're going to spin out, they're going to spin out this whole thing of, well, the Bucks are from California, so they're going to get the, the they're going to get the hometown advantage. I'm like, they're from Rancho Cucamonga. This is in Knollwood. It's not the same thing. <laughs> right? They're not even close to the same thing. That's like someone saying, well, San Diego and Sacramento, or San Diego and, uh, I don't know, San Diego and... I Santa guess, Monica. Santa Monica, yeah. Same thing. No, the fuck it's not. So that's, so that's o- why uh, what's Oakland's the, the same Cornette thing. Calls them yep. Cucamonga kids, huh? Yep. Oakland, Oakland, San Francisco, same exact thing. No, the fuck, it's not. Oh yeah. 